We're so excited to be joined today by Wendy Carrillo, who's running for office, That's running right. for Congress, no less, in the 34th District of California. Mm -hmm. Wendy, tell us a little bit about why you're running. I'm running because I believe now more than ever, women need to step up to the plate. And if not us, who? If not now, when? And so right now we're living in a very urgent moment in our nation's history where for far too long, men have made decisions concerning women's bodies, men have made decisions about our families. And you know, it's when we talk about political parity and political representation, what that truly means is that we need to be able to send people from a variety of different backgrounds to truly represent uh, to represent us in Congress. And so as an unrecognized refugee, as a formerly undocumented child that fled war, as somebody that grew up in the inner city um, on the bad side of town, um, and whose family is resilient and strong and compassionate and really has created and lived the American dream, now more than ever we need to fight to protect that. And so I'm running because not only is it a response to the new administration, but I'm running because I believe that we need to protect the very values that this country is founded on. And so when we yeah. say that we, the people, in order to form a more perfect union, must come together, that is what needs to happen at this moment. And this country is by no means in any ways done. Mm -hmm. It is up to us to continue to move it and guide it in the direction that we feel it needs to go to be a country of what can be and what should be and not a country of fear and misogyny and racism yeah. and oppression. Yeah, and when we talk about talk about fear and talk about um, you know a lot of these issues uh, like the ban and the immigration conversations we're having mm -hmm. right now a lot of times they're the conversations are had at tables that are not diverse you know and if you're if you're at that table you're one bringing a unique voice but how do you you know how do you intend to bring more people along with you and make sure that you know we're you're being a voice for for marginalized people and mm -hmm. and I say that with a caveat that that shouldn't be your sole responsibility that you that that there should be more people at those tables right so the difference between being a politician and being a public servant in many ways is that you come at it from a very different perspective so it is a public servant ask the questions what can I do to help what can I do to serve how do I bring people together? How do I bring coalition? How do I understand intersectionality in a way that impacts all people, not only in my city, in my state, but throughout the country? And as a member of Congress, it is our responsibility to ensure that all people across this great nation have uh, the rights to live their lives the way that they meant to live them and have access and have equity and have resources and have their civil rights respected. Yeah. And if they want to marry who they want to marry they should be able to if they want to go to college they should be afforded the resources and opportunities if they want to open up a small business they should be able to and so right now now more than ever it is about organizing mobilizing and ensuring that we continue this this movement that we're feeling across the country whether it's for women's rights or lgbt rights or black lives matter or the fight for water resources like we're seeing with Minimuchoni at Standing Rock. Like these are all things that impact people across the country. And we need to understand that what happens in North Dakota impacts California and what happens in Texas impacts Florida and what happens in New York impacts Wyoming. Like we are all connected and we can no longer live in our little silos. This is a country made of people from all over the world and that is what makes America unique and beautiful. Yeah. And we must ensure that no one is denied access based on where they come from or what religion they yeah. choose to practice. Yeah, and what's your, I mean, just from getting to talk with you today, you're tough. Like, I don't worry. I know you can run for office. Um, <laughs> what, but what's one thing um, that's been different that you expected, you know, in your, in your, your running for office? They say that um, when you choose to run for office, you will find out who your friends are. And that is very true. The people that show up for you the people that you don't expect show up for you and and that's been an incredible learning curve I think uh, women and women of color oftentimes don't have the resources to fundraise so if you're you know from a community you grew up there you've lived there your whole life like I have you know and and don't have big funders or big big like deep pockets that'll fund your campaign you build a grassroots coalition of people of hundreds of hundreds of people that support you 
but you have to be competitive. And in order for, for you to do that, you have to break outside the mold and stop thinking about when you're fundraising for, for money for your campaign, that it's not money for yourself. It is money for a vision of what you want this country to be like. So people are investing in a campaign because they're investing in America. And the sooner you start switching your mentality on that, then I think the more successful you can become. But you have to break out of the mold and, and mm -hmm. uh, stop being shy about asking for money. So I'm not shy. So go to my website, votewendycarrillo.com. There's a little red button that says donate. Click, make a donation. No donation is too small. But it is about the vision and ideas of what we want to, what we want this country to be. Yeah. So you have to believe in those values. Yeah, and speaking of vision, we one thing we always like to ask people is, what is your vision for what the United States of Women looks like? You know, like, what do you think about what you want the lives of women to be like in, you know, 20, 30, 40 years? I, you know, I grew up in a very disenfranchised community, and I didn't always have access to health care. So in high school, Planned Parenthood played a big role for me to learn about what it what it meant to have a breast exam and uh, you know just personal women's health and, and reproductive health and so I would like to be in a place in 40 years from now where that is no longer a question where our rights as women where our health and our bodies our responsibilities that we take very seriously and that no man in any position of Congress has a right to tell us what we can and should do with our bodies and I think most importantly women it's not just a look for women, we talk about breaking the glass ceiling. Sometimes for women of color, it's breaking a concrete ceiling. Like there is no glass. So it's harder. And so together we can push. And so, it but it takes a village. Like I can't do it alone. And even if I were to get elected, like it doesn't stop with becoming a, a public servant or representing a community. Like we need to keep pushing. So we need to push our members of Congress. We need to push the women in Congress to truly like represent and we need to push the men to advocate for women's rights and so if elected or whoever is elected um, in your you know in your city where you're watching this continue to push and advocate and and support the women that are running for office that's amazing thank you so much for joining us today <laughs> thank you and thank you for for watching this this short video and get engaged uh, don't sit on the sidelines democracy is not a spectator sport it's about getting involved and getting getting deep in it so yeah enjoy it thank you so much fun. Wendy <laughs>